special here. Um, normally, I would make straight wine, but someone told me of uh, something that uh, so they've seen somebody do, and it's called a double fermentation. I've searched YouTube on double fermentation, and no one has come up with this concept. Namely, what the double fermentation that uh, I was told of was you, you do your primary fermentation for 8 to 10 days. Then you turn around, you rack it into another fermentation bucket, and you add the exact same amount of sugar that you did in the beginning, and you let it ferment for another 8 to 10 days then you rack it into your carboy and then you, you continue the process as you normally would with with wine. So today we're just going to do the initial steps. And as you can see I got the yeast, I got yeast nutrients, I got water, I got six cups of sugar. My recipe that calls for two contain frozen containers of grape juice. And you want to set it out to out so it uh, warms up to room temperature. And for every two of these, you want two cups of sugar. So since this is just an experiment, I'm only going to do three gallons. Now I do have a full wine kit, but because this is an experiment, and I'm going to be making wine a regular batch of wine so I'm uh, trying to free that up so that well so namely I'm freeing up my other carboys and fermenting bucket so that I can make a regular batch of wine which is the same recipe as what you see here it's just I add a little bit other things like for every gallon wine I'll add in one teaspoon to one tablespoon of lemon juice. The last batch that I've done was fantastic. I think I'm going to stick with that recipe. So let's go ahead and get started here. trying to do is dissolve all the sugar. So we'll just set that down over there. And everything all my equipment is sanitized. You know, I'm a firm believer in it. So namely we're just gonna stir this until it's completely dissolved. can't live without this thing. I don't know why. Yeah. Since I started brewing, brewing Cooper's Kids, it has been a complete lifesaver for me. So it looks like this is complete, almost dissolved. thicker than normal water. You have to pay attention to that before. Alright. So let me just move this out of the way. And 
bring up my fermenting bucket. Yes, I'm using my original equipment here. Let's see. I think I can pick this up without burning myself. And we'll dump all that in there. Bloopers. There we go. That's two. Three. This is just exactly one gallon. Just wipe my hands off. been asked a few times about my bucket here. I couldn't tell you if it's food grade or not. I was working on a very 
very small budget to come up with a wine kit that was cheap and well so I really couldn't tell you if it food drink compatible or not. I do know that people put fish in here, you know, live fish and all that stuff, but you know, what's good for the fish? It's gotta be good for us. And I have never I haven't had any problems yet with with this yet, so we're going to fill up with water until we have exactly three gallons. Hydrometer reading. Actually, for some strange reason, when I ordered my wine kit, I got a the hydrometer with it. Ordered my Cooper's microbrewery kit, it's got a hydrometer. So I got two hydrometers. I guess you can't, can't have enough of them. So let's go ahead. All this has been sanitized, so go ahead and, and check my reading here. That will give me 12% alcohol. So, that's pretty good. Normally, normally it's been 11 and a half, but we're looking at 12%. So, we're going to pour that back in since everything is sanitized. Alright. Now, for the yeast nutrient. package that I got, it says one teaspoon per gallon of must, so we're going to add in three teaspoons or one tablespoon. So, alright, cooperate with me, Peg. Uh, we'll have to guesstimate here. Too. Uh, so 
some fell in already, so but I guess that's just a guesstimate. Sprinkle it in. Okay. Seal that up. Give it another good stir. something about asking the, asking on in one of his broadcasts, you know, who stirs, who gives you sprinkles. With the beer, I stir. With the wine, I definitely just sprinkle. So. Yeah, you little beasties get one. Even with, with just a three, just three gallons of must, I still use the whole entire package. All right, we're ready to seal up. And there you go. This is my little airlock tube. If you've seen my original video, this is a little setup I got. It's a little T joint, which I put, you know, just drilled a hole big large enough just with the snuggly being there, and then I will make sure I got a good seal. came up with was using a water bottle and what I did was I drilled a small hole to allow gases allow gases to release but yet try to keep out any contaminants and fill it with water and what I do is put the screw on it I set it down exactly about an inch, inch and a half below the water level. So that's it for this. For right now, we will uh, come back in about eight to ten days and rack it to rack it again. Add in more sugar. <laughs> 